Bosch has made some amazing miter saws over the years and when they decided to take their 12 inch axial glide miter saw and turn it into an 18 volt battery operated miter saw, I was a little skeptical as to how much power it was going to have and what options were going to come on it. Now this is a 60 pound saw, but it is very similar to the actual corded axial glide miter saw. So I'm not going to go through all the specs of this. First thing I'm going to dive into is how the battery portion works with the bi-turbo brushless motor. And then we're going to go into power, look at what it will do as far as a battery operated motor. And then we're going to dive into the rest of it. Stay tuned. Very quickly, while we're going over this saw, if you're not familiar with the Axial Glide, it's excellent for going up against a wall. Anything here that has a red button on it or red anything is because this is fully adjustable and the red stuff does something. This is going to be your bevel and we can take it back to detents, lock it in place, miter adjustments on the bottom. There's a ton of detents there. We want to lock it down. Everything on here is adjustable and everything that is red does something. So while we're going over this, take a look around. This saw is adjustable beyond belief. Some of the functions of the battery operated saw can be taken care of right here. This green tells me that the battery is good. It will come down to yellow when you get low and red when the battery is empty. You can see this three here. That tells me the RPM that I'm going to be at. Three is 4,000 RPM. I can drop down to Eco, which is going to be 2,500 RPM, move up to one, which is going to be 3,000 RPM, two, 3,500, and again, three, 4,000 RPM. So a lot of things can be told here from temperature to the Bluetooth connection that you can make that's off to the side. And the big difference that we see here between this and some of the corded models, I have an LED light down here that works well, and I also have a laser on each side of the blade. The lasers on this saw are not going to be able to be seen outside, so I'll quickly go over them now. Uh, they are fairly accurate. As with any laser, they're going to be off slightly, especially as you get further and further away. Um, but the laser and the LED light comes on if I just pull the trigger. I don't have to take away any safeties or if I even move the safety in one direction or another. I don't have to physically turn on the saw or get to the point where I'm going to be turning on the saw to make the lasers and the LED function. So I can use the laser to, to get close, then I can really fine tune myself in uh, with the blade and then I can remove the safety and turn on the saw. There is a soft start to it and it does slow down fairly quickly, um, but it's still a larger saw, so it takes a little bit of time to slow down. I've been making a small weight box for the back of my truck out of two by 12s and with all the cuts I made, I'm only down one bar. I've been using this on level three the whole time. Let's take some more cuts on this two by 12. You can look at the dust extraction and listen to the power of the motor. Let's double these guys up, put it through a little bit more. Now when you're cutting thicker lumber, the one thing that you'll notice is the boot in the back for dust extraction. It hits. And that's something that we find with just about anything. You also notice that I have this folded over at this point, and that's because it just seemed if I didn't fold the top over, it was a little awkward, and it seems to catch the dust better if it's folded over. I didn't let that stop me. If I was cutting this type of lumber all the time, I would just remove that.
Let's drop down to one 2x12 and also drop down to eco mode and just see what that's like. Obviously eco mode is going to be much slower and use less battery and it's not exactly designed for a 2x12 but it does work. Here's the difference between uh, that and speed level 1 which is just up one speed. And we'll go to speed level 2. Speed level three. Speed level three, anything like this, it's just butter. When it comes to beveling something a little bit wider again, we end up with a little bit of hit on our boot that's in the back. Again, if that was something I was doing constantly, I would just remove it, but it's something to note because as it comes out, it pushes slightly. Let's give this a go, we're on level three. I pushed that a little bit in back and you could definitely hear it in the motor. Let's give it a normal cut. Again, power is pretty good on this. It's a little bit less than a 15 amp saw, but at the same point, it doesn't really leave me wanting a ton more. I can do all the cuts and I get a very nice, accurate, smooth cut. Bosch rates this saw as a max cut width of 13 and a half inches, but uh, we measured it out here and was able to pull 13 and 5 eighths of an inch out of our saw. I've seen a lot of dust collection systems on a lot of miter saws and they all seem to work fairly mediocre but I want to give you an idea if you're cutting normal 2x lumber how well this one's going to work so you can watch where all the dust goes. You can also kind of tell by my sweatshirt that I'm getting a little bit of dust outside but it's a 20 degree day out here with a slight breeze and it's pretty fair actually for dust collection. If we were to look inside the bag, um, it's getting fairly full at this point in time and there is quite a bit in there. Not only is it 20 degrees out, and we're doing multiple cuts on this, but this saw is very efficient. If we even push the battery, we're still down one bar. Looking up here, same exact reading, just down one bar. Now at one point in time when I checked it out, outside, I was down two bars, uh, but I just brought this back in, cleaned everything up so we could continue the video, and here we are. I really like the fact that I can set this up to go through different RPMs, and I can kind of mess with it, and those RPMs are adjustable if you have the Bosch Toolbox app and you connect this to your phone. I don't know that too many people are gonna do that, but it is completely there if you'd like to. Really like the accuracy of this saw and the amount of cuts you can get with it with great power and very little battery usage. The Bosch 18 volt axial glide saw is perfect for me and what I'm gonna use it for, but it's not gonna be perfect for everyone. And I wanna just let everybody know that the setup that I have this on right now on a folding rolling stand is absolutely horrible. This saw weighs in at 60 pounds. So to remove this from the stand, I have to kind of come around it, pick it up and grab it out and do the same thing to put it on. It's a little bit too heavy for me to constantly remove it and add it. This is really where a gravity rise stand, Bosch is a really nice one that would fit this saw perfectly. And if you look at it in the stores, you'll actually see that uh, it's actually sold, the 15 amp motor one, the corded model, is sold with that stand. And that is an absolutely perfect stand for the saw because the saw can just stay and live on that stand and you don't have to worry about it. Putting this in and out of a truck constantly, not cool. I put it in the back of my trailer, no issue because it'll roll in and I don't have a problem, but lifting it around and putting it in a truck puts it in a place where if it were to fall, you could damage some things. So 
Realistically here, the accuracy, awesome. The adjustability, awesome. If you want more on that, we have videos out on the corded axial glide saw where we adjust things up, show you how the bevel works, show you how all the detents function, and we could go over this thing, like I said, for hours. But it really, what I really wanted to focus on was the power. And again, 20 degree day outside for some of this stuff. The wood's super cold, the saw is super cold, the battery is fairly cold because it's going in and out. And the battery life is excellent, almost surprising as far as the 8 amp hour battery. If I had a choice and there was all kinds of models that were out there and I could find it easily and that's not something I can do in my area at this time of year with the shipping restrictions and everything going on, I'd get the 12 amp hour battery if I was a contractor. Not that it's probably needed, but you might get a little bit more power out of it and also runtime, obviously. And why not? If you have a 60 pound saw, putting a little bit bigger battery on it does not matter. I know a lot of people are not gonna buy this saw for their workshop, but it would work great in a trailer or any place that you want to put it up against the wall. This Axial Glide actually saves room and you can see that nothing really comes back too far other than you can move the dust collection system over. But this is great for trailer use, construction use, put it right up against the wall, save some room. Nothing is really sticking out and none of the arms are there. Really like this saw. I will go over anything else more in depth probably in the future as we get time to really dive in deep on certain little sections of this saw. But if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. As always, give us a like in this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.